on to the news. And the first bit of news is could Supernatural end after 300 episodes? Now, I personally don't watch Supernatural. Um, I know a lot of people who do, and you know, great. It's a it's a great show. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, it's got you know, it's it's already had 241 episodes, and um, and you know they've gone through what 12 seasons now. You know they're going to be going into their 13th. I think possibly one of the last WB shows still on the air. Um, so, I mean, there's, you know, great things to be said about the show, but you always run into this question, is it time for it to end? And, uh, Jensen Eccles, who plays, uh, one of the Winchester brothers, uh, I apologize. I don't know which one. I think it's Dean. Just me, my guess. He plays Dean Winchester. Um, he said that. Um, that 300 episodes sounds like a good number to work for. And, um, actually, no, I don't think they're, they're at, hold on. I gotta do some searching now because the article doesn't sound right. Like it's matching with where it's going, but so what, what do you think? What do you think, Corey? I mean, uh, well, like you, you I'm not, oh. I'm not a supernatural watcher and it's not because I'm not interested in the show. I, watch the first episode or two when it launched and it's a it's a perfectly good show of the time that it came out and i think that it's done really well by building and retaining its fan base and it's one of those things that i think as it went along it got better at um not over complicating what the show was about like it started out probably a little bit more cw or wb and became less of that theme and got to do sillier things. It, it added cast members um, who are like a big portion of it. It started playing around with some of the things of like, uh, oh, we'd really like to ship this guy with this guy. And so let's see what happens if we do that. And I think that that's kind of what it is, is it plays with what the fans' expectations are. And it, it doesn't just screw them over like what some people were complaining the hundred did last season uh it it's like oh yeah let's see if we can do something with that let's see if we can make that happen and uh i think that that's smart so the question always is when does a show hit its limit and when should a show bow out now these are these are people who were young actors when they started but now they're they're not not young. I mean, compared to me, they're still pretty young. But uh, <laughs> these guys, one of them transferred over from the first season of Smallville over to this. Um, they yeah. were they were just like a couple of guys who got, you know, relatively lucky getting the show and having it take off and last. And I don't know that it was hugely popular. I think it's always one of those things that for a while it was surprising when it came back. But it's always been solid enough in the ratings to never really get a question of like, oh yeah, they'll they'll bring back Supernatural again. Um, I, th I think what it, it was with that is it started out slow. Well, not like 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 more of a. There's a few people who like it, um, but you know, just barely squeaking by. And now it's one of those shows that it's it's a, it's a temple for the CW in all in all respects. You know, where CW has, you know, the superhero shows, you know, the Flash, Arrowverse, but then at the other side of it, they have Supernatural. And that's been, you know, they've they've done other Supernatural vampire shows that have come and gone. Well, I mean, it's funny because when new shows come out that are of the same like, everybody goes, yeah, but it's just like Supernatural. I mean, that was one of the problems that people yeah. had with Constantine uh, last season was the fact that it's like, oh, so it's it's like supernatural. Why wouldn't I just watch that? Yeah, why wouldn't I just watch that? Well, I can tell you why I don't watch it, um, and that's because it's at 250-something episodes so far. 241. And... They're on season 11 this year, I believe. I think they're starting season 12. Uh, or, yeah, they're starting season 12. 
Yeah, season eleven just came out on on DVD. Uh, that's that's yeah. hugely intimidating. Now you can say the same thing about things like Doctor Who, but Doctor Who, I came into mm -hmm. with a new Doctor. I came in in the Matt Smith era, and while I stuck around for part of the 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 stuff after him, it, it just it I, it lost its appeal for me. But you can definitely say, well, there's so much Doctor Who that if you're a real Doctor Who fan, then you know all this stuff. And if you want to jump in, do you feel intimidated by the fans because they know everything and you don't know nearly as much? Uh, or is it easier for you to just go fucking watch Sherlock? Yeah, it, it, it might be. <laughs> it might be easier to watch Sherlock. It might be easier to watch a canceled season of Constantine as opposed to trying to catch up with uh, where supernatural is, but if they if yeah. they know their business, then they make it easy enough to jump in any new season that starts. Uh, <laughs> and it it's certainly something that because of the people that I know that love it, uh, and my respect for them, that I want to check out the show. And there's people on there that I really like. Mark Shepard has become a regular on the on the show, and Mark Shepard has been in like all types of genre shows that you can think of. Going back to he played Badger in Firefly, he was recurring. Uh, he was Sterling on Leverage. He's just done so much stuff. He was in the season of uh, Torchwood, I think that was on. St no, no, he was in. He was in Doctor Who. Uh, he oh was, yeah, yeah. He the, well, they killed Hitler. <laughs> I want to say no, it, was, it was before. I think it was before. Oh, that he was one. in the one with the silence. He was the American guy yeah, that he, was hanging out with him. There, wait, oh, oh, I'm thinking. I think I'm thinking of a different person then, because he was the. Um, he at, for a while was the voice of BBC America when they, when they would do their promos and stuff. But he, if if it's the guy I'm thinking of, he was the the government agent for for America. But to me, he sounded British. I'm like, wait, why does this American dude sound British? He's got that but kind of raspy deep... voice. Yeah, yeah. That um, you know, fake American. It's like House. Uh, but he, he's <laughs> done. I mean, you just go through his his listing. He's been on like every freaking genre show you can find. Yeah. Uh, NCIS. He's been a regular on Twenty Four, uh, Battlestar Galactica, Dollhouse. I, the guy is like when you talk about these types of shows, he, friends with he's done Josh Sweden. Let's just put it that way. Uh, among others, I and and he's he's <laughs> yeah. talented. He he just plays a compelling character, and I think he found a good character to play and Crowley on this show. Um, I, I just, but anytime you're in something for this long, obviously your first instinct is all right. Well, can we last longer than all the other shows? Can we be the one that beats it out? It's like, no, the Simpsons has fucked that up for everybody. Uh, so <laughs> it used to be, Oh, we've got to beat cheers or we've got to beat mash. Uh, now we're long past either of those things really being, that giant of an accomplishment because the Simpsons has done it. Uh, South Park has yeah. kind of done it too. So, so at this point, it's like, all right, well, we I, just I, get to a, we get to a moment where the story has reached a solid enough conclusion, and yeah. we as actors want to move on. We're we're ready to go. We're we're ready to not be on the show week after week. Which is not to say that they don't still love it, but it's kind of. Maybe we get to try the next thing now. Yeah, and also to point out some people who have been on on Supernatural, um, one who's in in the genre. You know, he's he for a lot of it, he's a genre actor. Um, and also a side note, he was in one episode of Shame of Shameless before being recast by Dermot Mulroney, and that's Jeffrey Dean Morgan, um, played the Winchester's played dad. dad. So he, yeah, yeah. And I was always kind of and disappointed so, because the Winchesters are named Sam and Dean. And so I thought for sure he was going to be named Frank. Uh, it just <laughs> it just seemed like a perfect Rat Pack kind of thing. But uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was something they weren't really quite going no, with. The same. Yeah, I, just, I, I, I honestly agree with you with, with what you said about the whole this about this whole thing is it used to be let's let's last longer than insert show here who's been on for a long time and to me it seems like a, a lot of shows have been like well let's get to 10 seasons or you know get to 100 episodes so so that we can get into syndication 
but now it's it's sort of become this let's make it long enough let's 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 hit this fine line to where we're not going so far past the the point the jump the shark the moment so the moment where it quits being good and or it it ends up being like a zombie show like uh uh, Graham Linehan, the creator of the IT crowd, has said, has stated as to why it's, um, why they they did how many you know why they did how many seasons that they did of the IT crowd, and it's the same it's the same thing it's similar process it's, you know do you know go until you're good but don't keep doing the same things over. Don't overstay your welcome is yeah. is essentially what it is is you want to yeah. everybody wants to go out on top. Uh, some people will will milk, milk something well past the time that it's not worth it anymore. Uh, or sometimes you'll get a disappointing last season. You'll go, okay, yeah, this is great. I love the show. Or you'll get a last few seasons, like How I Met Your Mother, which just, in my opinion, went too long trying to prolong the mystery of who the mother was that by the time they got around to telling us who it was, uh, we had, I had completely burnt out on it. I remember when we were doing what we're watching weekly with Glenn and I announced that I was done with the show. And he's like, how are you done with the show? Don't you want to stick around when they finish it off in the next season and a half? He's like, they, they pretty much announced that they, they know the ending. I'm like, that's great. Fuck them in their ending. Because <laughs> at this point in time, they've made the characters unrelatable and uninteresting. I can't hack being a part of this group anymore that I loved for the first couple of seasons and I look forward to seeing all yep. the time. And now it's like it's on in syndication all the goddamn time. And I can't fucking work up even one iota of interest in it. It it just yeah. it beat the shit out of me as a viewer <laughs> that I was like, uh, happy fuck you to you guys at CBS. And then they tried to do a spin-off with whole new characters and doing how I met your father. And that did shit. And I can tell you it's probably because nobody gave a fuck especially after the yep. last season where they just like hey by the way we're gonna tell you who the mother is but really fuck you fuck you in the asshole watcher <laughs> um yeah cancer <laughs> fuck you and it goes back to being robin again so it, like i said at the beginning yeah, spoilers that's... but if that's a spoiler for you um nothing's more spoiled than the kick of the nuts of that show was by the end of it that's yeah where you go from you realize you go from the having basically the first season would be all that show needed you know you make robin the mother you do all this other stuff as opposed to what it turned out to be of let's tell the, the my kids in and and thank god they covered their ass it, with this show and we've gotten off topic but i don't care to cover enough to where they had um oh i can't, I can't think of the names but the the kids they sh had them go wait a minute and do what everyone is thinking of you just told us in almost graphic detail your sex life so you could go and 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 get back together with aunt robin you know the 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 not real aunt, but you know, aunt in the sense of oh, we've been friends forever, so they're your kids are like my my nieces and nephews, sort of thing. Yeah, I mean that bullshit wow. right there. We've talked before about how I have an issue with on um, the CW superhero shows how they introduce the love interest in the first season, the unrequited love interest, but is who the person's supposed to be with. So on Green yeah. Arrow, of course, he's supposed to be with Black Canary. Uh, whoever the Black Canary is, it's supposed to be Green Arrow and Black Canary because that's what it is in the comics. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a cough that won't go away. Um, go away, cough. And then, on, and then on the Flash, the, the same thing. They introduce Iris at the very beginning, and it's like, okay, so he's got to be with Iris at some point because that's the whole premise of his like unrequited love and the build up to these things. And then what happens is so every other relationship that gets introduced along the way is either in the way of that. Um, and it's like, get those fuckers out of here. Or <laughs> there's all these stupid steps that are, but they make the characters act ridiculous to each other so that you wind up hating 
the the love interest or you wind up hating the main character for how they're acting around the love interest you're like why the fuck is this going on who the hell's felicity smoke and i don't i don't even know why is he dating wally's wife in this episode that makes no sense at all um and so <laughs> it, it's a challenge and it's a it's a pretty dumb way to start your fucking show to say these two people wind up together but how i met your mother that was pretty much the premise of the show is i'm going to tell you how i wound up with your mom uh but just kidding i'm not going to tell you who your mom is until much much later they're your fucking kids. They know who their mom is. Uh, so at some point, they're just going to go, Dad, all these bitches you were talking about, none of them are mom. So <laughs> I got a fucking PlayStation 9 upstairs. Uh, I, I've got friends, maybe. I've got some sort of teleportation unit so I can go to Mars. <laughs> because I'm assuming that it takes far enough in the future that this is when this happens. Um can you just not right now? Uh, I personally, I wish she had lived and you had died because she knew when to shut up. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it it lost the goodwill of the audience. And as as uh, Jensen Ackles and um, uh, Jared Padalecki. <laughs> Yep. And as they're looking at the show, they have the goodwill of the audience. They've retained the goodwill of the audience through 11 seasons so far. And that's amazing. You know, and that that's just the actors and obviously the writers, the producers, directors of the show. All of that has somehow had this great longevity. And so it's a good idea to know when you're out is. And I love a show that knows when to conclude. But this mm -hmm. show is not built on a simple like we've got this one premise that it's about. It is obviously it's a premise of two brothers who fight supernatural crime entities things. And that's that's it. But there's so many ways you can go with that. That's like seven seasons of Buffy and five seasons of Angel. There's there's not a shortage of stories that you can tell. It may start to feel a little repetitive if you if you're not careful. But when you introduce guest stars and you introduce new themes and stuff and you change this like, well, they went from fighting demons, but now they're fighting angels. And how does that change things up? I, I think that that's all smart. But to say, yeah, all right, we, we want to get to a big round number. It will feel like a huge accomplishment. We're obviously going to cut some great checks from the syndication rights. And this will play all Very fucking awesome. day and night. on. Yeah, it'll play all night on TNT and all these other stations. Um, and that's great, but realistically, to just say we want to finish strong so that there's never that disappointing season of why didn't they end this before? It's like the fourth season of Arrested Development was not well received um, mm -hmm. because it was trying to recapture a magic that was so well loved by that point. Like it wasn't well loved when it was on because I was the only motherfucker that was watching it, but everybody watched it on netflix like this That's, is fucking amazing yeah. they've got to bring this back and then they bring it back and it's like oh well shit they didn't know what the fuck they were doing for this season did they wait is wait fourth season is that the netflix season that's the netflix season yeah that's so I, I didn't mind it but i think i went into that one um i th I, th I think i had went into that one without seeing the stuff beforehand or had seeing it recently enough which is just, I mean, take a gun to your head because that's just fucking stupid. <laughs> hey, 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 keep in mind you're also talking to the dude who read the com the Firefly comics, right? Or, or you watched you watched Serenity. Serenity before you watched Firefly, and I gave you no, a lot of no. fucking shit about that. No, it, it wasn't that. It was it was I had watched Firefly, had not watched Serenity, but was reading the comics which take place after Serenity. I seem to remember giving you shit That's about watching. Shit. I, I seem to remember giving you shit about watching the movie first. I'm like, you motherfucker, why would you? Why would you do that? Um, <laughs> it's right, like so watching Fire Walk with me before watching Twin Peaks itself. And and yes. chronologically, that's the order they take place in. But don't fucking do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, but good so on them. Good on them for for yeah. you know very likely hitting 300 episodes. Because uh, it seems very achievable, and it seems like that's a that's a good plan. Yeah, yeah. So changing gears, you mentioned Doctor Who before, 
And so we have a story about it. This is coming from Bleeding Cool, and that's the Lost Doctor Who episode, The Power of the Daleks, is coming back as an animated feature. Now, this is pretty cool because uh, a little bit of backstory for you guys here, folks. The BBC, back in the day, didn't give a shit about keeping f- the TV shows or anything else. Th- uh, a lot of times, like Doctor Who, it aired one time and then they the tapes went somewhere to Albania or you know some other place that's where you've seen you've heard of the doctor who lost tapes um and now there's um and the link will actually have a quick preview of this but but with this episode one of the things that, or this uh it's not an episode but it's 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 like a little this storyline um, they recorded, yeah, or or as Beatmaster pointed out, sometimes the BBC simply recorded over the same tape, um, which is because tape was how, expensive. Yeah, well, tape was expensive, and there was also really cheap bastards at the BBC. That's why we almost also lost Monty Python. You know, like because you know Flying Circus that was that was almost all gone until someone realized as they were getting ready to hit record, like wait a minute, we might want that tape. I mean, just think about the opposite side of it, though, uh, because we've heard Leo at Twit talk over and over again about all the old episodes of the original Screensaver series that were on Tech TV, and how those things are just sitting in a basement somewhere, and he's been trying to get the rights to them, because they're not doing dick with them, but they're holding on to them like fucking sadists, just like no, uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything with this, but fuck you anyways, because uh, we're not gonna let you have it to do something with. Uh, you're the only one showing the interest, and your audience would probably love it, and so we could make some money off of it. But we're just gonna spite your ass, and uh, we're just gonna go over to the tapes yeah. and just write down Attack of the Show on all of them, and uh, give you a little <laughs> finger in the air, and, and just like you know, just because we're dicks, because we're fucking dicks is what we are. <laughs> Uh, but so this is, I believe, if I'm reading the article correctly, yeah, this is the first full appearance of Patrick Troughton, the, the second actor. Um, and this it takes place on a planet called Vulcan. Um, oh, son of a bitch! Is it really? Pause for um, effect. Um, stop the recording there. Because I don't want to. I won't leave the call, but. Well, can you try pulling your mic and plugging it back in? Oh, you can try that. Cannot hear you. Can't hear you. Love a show that's live. Pete, am I also muted? Cool. Thank you.
fucking hang out. Can you hear me now? Can hear you now. All right, cool. Although, I mean, uh, to be fair, sure. Sprint is much cheaper. All right, that should be good. Oh, I'm not hearing Corey now. What the fuck? You can't hear Why me? Why am I not hearing? Oh, hold on. Restart. There we go. No, it's it was on me. That's That was the problem. Okay. Is because the voice meter crapped out on me as well. So, yay. All right. So, I'm going to start the... Rec- I so forgot what I was talking about. Oh, me too. <laughs> um, I know it was the Doctor Who animated thing, but I forgot what... Yeah, the um, last thing that I had said was uh, Twit and the Screensavers episodes. <laughs> Pause for effect. Okay, so it was the planet Vulcan is what I had said. All right. And we're back for the audio listeners there. Um, so like I was saying, um, and thank you. Oh, hey, we got Levi in the chat oh, as, shit. as well. Yeah, we got we got Levi and an iHeartBrew crew um, going out, er, joining us in there. Hey, welcome, guys. Known um, that people were actually paying attention, I would have tried to be more entertaining. <laughs> yeah. So, um, mm, fail. Like, like I said, this is the <laughs> yeah, um, this is the first full appearance of Patrick Troughton um, as a doctor, and it takes place on the planet Vulcan, not the Star Trek one, but a different Vulcan. And he, the doctor, must confront the Daleks. And the the cool part about this whole thing is. Um, The new version has been produced by the team behind the highly successful animation of Lost Dad's Army episode of Stripe for Frasier under the direction of Charles Norton and comic book artists Martin uh, Garricty and Adrian Salmon provided character designs. And I watched the 25 second uh, preview, uh, preview thing that they have and it's an awful lot like the or a very similar animation style to the how it should have ended videos but better you know it's not that shitty sort of like low rent budget or low rent animation stuff you know no offense to him but you know it, it looks pretty but it, but this is cool because um and and so here if you're here in America I should point out that the the story will debut on BBC America the following week on, or so on December, November 12th, and the next day will be available to stream on the BBC America website and mobile apps. And we have no idea yet on when it'll be, um, when it'll be on DVD. But, and, and it'll premiere on, or it'll be released on the BBC store on Saturday, November 5th at 5.50 p.m. to commemorate the to the minute 50th anniversary of the original show's airing. Or the original wow. Series airing. Acknowledging that your show has been around for 50 years and fucking doing something for it. That's yeah. an amazing thing. I wonder if <laughs> other shows, specifically in the sci-fi <laughs> genre, would think to do something for their 50th anniversaries. Um, but we released a movie. Anything. Any fucking thing <laughs> for the day. Uh, not even to the exact second, because that may be a little extreme. Just one fucking smidgen of acknowledgement that this phenomenon that's been around for 50 <laughs> fucking years in multiple incarnations <laughs> might mean something to the fucking fans who open their wallets and hearts to you on a continuing basis and buy your merchandise and see your shitty reboots and fucking are waiting on bated breath with balls out for your show to start on your fucking premium subscription bullshit channel. We don't give a fuck why. Just try to throw a fucking bone. Fucking A. 
<laughs> could anybody and... could anybody possibly fit in that category? Oh fuck. I speak, of course, of the man from Atlantis starring Patrick Dubby. Um <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Now I need to single out this audio. Now, and going off that like, I, that whole rant yeah. there, though, um, considering Star Trek's previous foray into animation, uh, maybe it's better if we don't. Well, see, you weren't asking for a Star Trek. Let's let's reanimate the original pilot, and then air it the exact moment, or really, city the exact moment on. Uh, on you know cbs.com or what the fuck ever they would do but because you're you you want while i was oh god hold on but that's better i needed something to because oh, i started choking i was laughing so hard um but no it's it is a great point you you make there i mean we are in this time right now like it's wonder woman's 75th anniversary it's captain america i think it's just ended his 75th anniversary you know all these big anniversaries in nerd culture and this is so far the coolest one of airing or releasing now it would have been cool if they aired it on bbc one or you know bbc two or whatever like that day like you know at at 5 55 or at 5 50 p.m it's now doctor who the power of the daleks enjoy you know that sort of thing but this is still cool, you know. We're gonna get this, and but I, I honestly, I recommend you go check out uh, our show notes. It'll have the link for, um, the, the link for the bleeding cool article that has the the twenty five second preview, and it looks pretty cool, to be honest. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. All right, the next story, um. Flash Thompson will play Deadpool. Or, God damn it. Flash Thompson will play Deathstroke in the Batman movie. Um, I, I worded it that way because everyone knows Joe Manganiello from True Blood or uh, Magic Mike, but a lot of I people to seem honest, to forget. I've only seen the first episode and the last episode of True Blood, and I can't quite remember if he was in either of those. So I don't <laughs> know if I know him for that or not. Actually, if I remember correctly, and this is just from like watching him on like Fallon, I don't think he was in the last one. Oh, he was in the last one. Okay, um, but it's but anyways, everyone knows him as you know from being those two big roles. You know where he's, you know, big and buff, and you know, take stripping his clothes off and all that stuff. But I like to remember him from being Flash Thompson. <clears throat> excuse me, Flash Thompson on. Spider Man, the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies, and really, but it, it's a, yeah, he was Flash Thompson on in the Spider Man movies in the Spider Man trilogy. No recollection at all. I mean, and um, and it's funny because they've been playing Spider Man two on on uh, uh -huh. Cinemax lately, and I keep going, oh yeah, Spider Man two. I really enjoyed that. I probably shouldn't Wait, watch it. And fuck it up, Spider Man. Uh, the the okay. The, so in my opinion, on. the best of all the Spider-Man movies. Now I haven't seen Amazing Spider-Man two, and I haven't seen Spider-Man three because I know uh, not to slam my dick in a door. Uh, um, yeah. So it, it just <laughs> at some point, my mom said, "Hey, quit putting your hand in the fire, you dumb shit. You're gonna burn yourself and make yourself miserable." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, that's that's a good lesson to learn." And I wonder if I can apply that to terrible superhero movies somewhere down the road and fortunately i've been given multiple opportunities um yeah so yeah he i also no but Big also Flash. no no yeah he also joins a I, I and i can't remember exactly i know he's he joins with this movie a distinct person who has been in in a small category of people who have been in both a marvel dc or a marvel comic book movie and a dc movie you know, playing different characters because Ben Affleck was Daredevil. Um, and I'm trying to think of, I, I think there's another one that I can't think of right now that was in both a Marvel and a DC movie. And that's cool. I, I like seeing that stuff. But it was, this well, has been. Well, we know that J. Jonah Jameson from the Spider Man movies is. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James Gordon. Yeah. Uh, there's another one right there. You know, he's, as you just mentioned, that, um, 
we'll, we'll just make sure commissioner Gordon that everything goes as tempo. Um, that's a, Oh God, I can't think of the name of the movie. A whiplash joke right there for you, for you folks. Uh, but Ben Affleck has been teasing for a while now that the, that, you know, while they're working on justice league, he's also been working on Batman. He's writing Batman with Jeff Johns. Um, he's, <clears throat> excuse me, he's doing, you know, he's getting that all set up and they teased his villain. And at first it was, it was just the armor of Deathstroke. And now they have it, they, they, they just announced it like this weekend that it's Joe Manganiello. And I'm like, this is pretty good casting. This is honestly one of the castings to, to, to nerd out a little bit, Joe Manganiello, I, I see this being a really solid casting choice because of the fact that he looks like Slade Wilson, you know, like the only other one I could see would be, um, the dude from, uh, from the, from avatar. And he's in, he's the main, he's the blind guy in that horror movie coming out this like really soon. Uh, it's already out. It's, it's um, been going for a little while. Don't breathe. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, don't breathe. Which is, I mean, he's also working really hard. That guy, uh, Stephen Lang, I think, is yeah, working Stephen really Lang. hard to try to win the cable role for yeah. uh, Deadpool, uh, which is funny because, uh, fair or not, there is always comparisons between Deathstroke and Deadpool uh, that people make. Mm -hmm. And to see two people who you know, could easily play one or the other and and have them be obvious choices for, for one role or the other role is, is, yeah, that makes a certain degree of sense. I... I don't know. I mean... Sorry, I'm laughing because... Something else. I don't know enough about Joe Manganiello's acting because uh, I really have not seen him in much of anything, but he's he's everything I've seen him as himself in, like when he's just talking to people, when he's being interviewed, he's got a good sense of humor. Obviously, yeah. doing the mm -hmm. the Magic Mike movies, he's got a a good outlook on on being in things. I guess he was in the last season of How I Met Your Mother, so fuck you for that. But. I don't know. I, I yeah, guess it's, it's it, perfectly it, okay. It it it's just. I think it's really funny that at this point in time, we're talking about Deathstroke in the Batman film being the the main Batman villain when so much was being said uh, just a couple months ago of Jared Leto just like he was just dying to to wind up in the Batman movie. And now he's pretty much washed his hands of anything to do with with being the Joker or being with DC at this point because he's so hurt and pissed off that they edited him the fuck out of the, the, the Suicide Squad film in such a way um, that that we're we're looking at something completely different. I I think that Deathstroke is one of those characters that I, if you want to see a duel between a hero and an anti-hero towards a villain or whatever that's he's a pretty yeah. good matchup for batman uh but he's also he's done so much in other things i would have i mean it's it's kind of hard to say because i don't really know what's going on with the cyborg movie uh or if there's going to be a cyborg movie or if rumors have said that maybe they'll turn it into a titans movie instead it seems like Deathstroke is something that because of his history with the Titans, you would have given to Cyborg because that would have made the Cyborg movie more interesting. Because I got to still say, Cyborg is a boring-ass character. I think he's great as part yeah. of the team, but the only incarnation of Cyborg I ever gave a shit about was the Teen Titans cartoon. Uh, in the comics, mm -hmm. I think he's just dead weight in the Justice League. I don't think he's proven to be a worthwhile addition. Certainly not a worthwhile replacement for Martian Manhunter uh, as part of the team. And I don't know... I, I haven't seen anything interesting so far, but we've only seen like a couple s clips of him here and there in the the previews for the Justice League film and like being kind of put together on a table in 
some weird video clip that Batman found or was given to him that he obviously did no detective work to get. Um, I just, yeah, I guess it's cool. And, and certainly to see these two actors of, of a certain physicality and stature going up against each other could, could work really well. But I don't know. It, it just, I still haven't gotten to the point where I'm excited over the the Warner Cinematic Universe for the superheroes yet. I know that they, that Jeff Johns has said we're gonna we're gonna lay back and 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 not be so grim and dark and everything anymore. And and certainly the preview that I saw for Justice League looked a far cry better than what I've seen so far. But mm-hmm. I'm still waiting for that moment of like. Here's where it clicks. And I, I hope yeah. Wonder Woman does that because I want Wonder Woman to be a huge success. But it just, it's still like, it's too soon to tell with any of this. Yeah. So right now it's it's a cool casting. It's a potentially cool character, but it still depends on what they do with it. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, it's one of those things that I feel weird about because with Batman, it seems like they might start contradicting themselves and where they're wanting to go because they're like, oh, we're wanting to be lighter and all this stuff. And ba- Batman, I think, has worked best when he's been dark. You know, I mean, haha, he's the Dark Knight, but... I uh, See, but, I think I think the Batman works in, in a potentially, yeah, in a dark environment and certainly with more mature, darker themes... But I like a little bit of lightheartedness to it. There's a reason why the Burton yeah. films work so well because they they worked in just enough comedy to alleviate the audience from just sitting there and watching vile stuff happen and people punching each other for two hours. I mean, the punching yeah. each other stuff is cool, but by the time you get to four, five, seven, ten movies of it, it it's mm-hmm. too much now you can go way too far in the wrong direction and we'll call that wrong direction Schumacher. But <laughs> when you, when you come back around, I think that there's a tentative balance between having a character with some life and some humor. And I think Bale did that really well. I think that there were enough beats in, in Bale's Batman, certainly in Batman begins where you could get some comedy out of it. You could get that wry sense of humor uh, in the things, especially the things that he would do with either Alfred or with uh, with a Fox, uh, that they they were their interactions together worked really really well, and it took some of the heat away from the more violent things of going up against Ra's al Ghul or Two Face or whatever. I mean, the Joker was comedic but horrific at the same time. I think that was just a perfect balance to lay. But that's what the Joker should be. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's kind of part of what was missing from Leto's Joker is that he he wasn't really funny or interesting. He was just in makeup and tattoos, really bad tattoos. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. <clears throat> so. We'll see how this goes as as you know time as time goes on. The I also last... want to give props to Joe Magnello though, because he is apparently the voice of Hefty Smurf in the filming, currently filming Smurfs movie. And uh that that's awesome. You go. Yeah. You're playing a Smurf. You're a cool dude. Yeah. No, yeah. Um so the final piece of news is that and also Evan's pointing out that Joe Manganiello was in the Netflix Pee Wee uh, Pee Wee Herman movie. Um, but the last bit of news is that BBC just lost one of its biggest shows. Now, I'm not talking about Top Gear because they still have Top Gear, um, even though such as it is, Grand, yeah, such as it is, even though the Grand Tour is beginning soon. Um, but the the staple, one of the staple shows on there with the Great British Bake Off is leaving BBC after it completes this series. And I'm going to say series because this is a British, I'm talking about a British show. Um, and it'll be going to channel four next year um, with it and all of its, <clears throat> they're talking about doing other things. It's a, it's a three-year deal 
um, that Love Productions, the company behind Bake Off, made. And it sounds like it, it, it. This is honestly a smart choice for for Love Productions and for you know the great or for Great British British Bake Off because they uh, they wanted from the BBC they wanted the corporation to pay uh, twenty five million pounds a year to hold on to the to the baking show, and I guess the BBC countered with. Uh, 12 million over which is i believe double what their budget is right now but 25 million is like triple or something like that if i remember well, from reading the article. quadruple if 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 they're yeah, at 6 million now um to <clears throat> double the 12 million then yeah. they would be yeah sorry it's, so it's a four twenty five. yeah and so there's um and, and there's also, I guess they uh, Love Productions had uh, rejected bigger offers from both Netflix and ITV, and they did that because they wanted to stay on the the Freeview platform that um, that the, that England has. So, to explain that for the American viewers, um, the British people they pay a TV tax, a TV license tax, and w- uh, this tax they get. Every if they have a TV in the, in their house, they have to pay the tax, and so with this, they get access to the BBC. This also part and partially funds the BBC, ITV, I believe Channel Five, and a few other stations with it for free. It's well with paying their tax. Um, to get any other channels, that's you you know you pay they pay their cable network. You know they pay their Virgin Media or their um uh, Sky Media you know you know whatever the cable companies that are that are over there and itv is in the pay bracket it's in the cable company bracket so they want it and love media wanted to make because they get killer ratings um they're the this article gives me from the telegraph uh from telegraph.co.uk they give the ratings for the first three episodes and the uh for this season or this series of british bake-off and the first episode had 10.34 million uh, viewers, then 10.1 and 9.7 for episode three. You know, it's a decline, but still, that's for for England. No, it's a very good hold from first to yeah. third episode. Yeah, that's that's great numbers right there. And so that's also because I believe you know because they're on Freeview. It's essentially like you know NBC, CBS. You can get those with an over-the-air antenna. Yeah, Here, and I mean. And- we're looking at right now the the current season of Big Brother is about to finish off. I don't know what the numbers are for the series for this season, but <clears throat> their next season they're planning on doing again on their premium uh, rental, like their their <laughs> version of Netflix that yeah. that CBS is doing, and it's going to be a question: how many people are going to go from watching this? live on regular TV, which you can get for free over an antenna or you get with your basic cable package, your basic um, direct TV package to paying the eight bucks a month or whatever it is to get the CBS streaming service. And <clears throat> I guess you can kind of maybe make a case. Well, we get this many people who pay for the big brother behind the scenes stuff, the after dark, uh, those kinds of things um, yeah. already. So if we just get those people to to pay for the new service, then that will do it. Um, or maybe more people will switch over to it because of whatever other content they're going to have on there, uh, like the Star Trek program, or because it's going to be the whole show. It's not just going to be after hour stuff. But it it's it's kind of an experiment to see does your audience follow? How much of your audience follows? How much of it pays itself back by doing it that way? Or is your audience going to be pissed because there's going to be this whole season that for the most part, they won't be able to see without paying a premium subscription? Uh, like Brad from Galactic Radio, uh, who, mm-hmm. who who said multiple times. Who, who had a Corey rant. I, he had a Brad this. rant. 
It, he is his rants are <laughs> of a different level. Uh, it, he he's just very pissed off. It's like, oh, so you're going to show me an episode on regular TV, and then you're expect me to go over to the subscription model that I don't want, uh, and that's the only way I'm going to be able to get it. Well, then I'm not watching your Star Trek show. And mm -hmm. for Brad, who is a lifelong Star Trek fan, that's a big statement. That's a big deal. Now he's he's taking a stand that a lot of people maybe won't take. But if enough people do and enough people feel betrayed, then that's an experiment that can blow up in their faces. And I think it's a yeah. pretty big risk on uh, it. But that's what it is. It has to be a big risk. You have to do something really huge to get people to do that the first time. And a, a property like Star Trek would do that. Maybe a big brother would do that. But I can see why the, the Great British Bake Off, why they wouldn't want to make that leap. They want to keep it where their audience already is. Yeah. Yeah, and the but the other thing though is there's a couple other things in here that are interesting, and it's said that the BBC is understood to have a one year holdback clause that prevents its rivals from airing the standard version of the baking show for a year after the current season ends. However, they might waive that, and also it's we don't know if because one of the things that that and, and the show airs here on PBS as the Great British Baking Show. I should point that out for the American viewers. Um, it's not clear if the Bake Off, uh, if any of the popular Bake Off presenters will move over with uh, Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood as the judges or um, Sue Perkins and Mel uh, uh, Giardowski. I don't know how to pronounce her last name because um, they all have expressed in des a desire to stay with the BBC. And also, this isn't the first program, the first big program to leave the BBC. Um, the uh, ITV stole the voice um, because, I, and that one, I don't know if, how that one went, if it was America made it first and then Britain or Britain, then America, but you know, they have their version of the voice and actually will I am as a judge on the voice over there. And so that left for ITV and uh, there's quite a bit. There's probably talks of other shows, um, other big staple shows going over there too. Um, like Dragon's Den would be another of the big tentpole shows, and but this is an interesting and intriguing thing because I mean, this could mean what, what does this mean for BBC as a as a as a program as a company? You know, sorry, Dale. Well, I mean, BBC it has gone through various programs throughout its entire history. I I don't know that this necessarily is a huge hit for them to to lose this particular show um but we are seeing we're seeing a lot of this here is that the tv the standard tv networks don't get the attention that they did before and the shows that everybody is talking about are now on either basic cable channels that are further down the line like uh amc a and e uh, TNT or whatever, or, or or FX, or they're moving to Netflix, Amazon, that kind of thing, HBO. It, the People are willing to pay for the better content because we think that's where the better content hides. And I don't know that anybody is bringing those types of shows or could pull off one of those types of shows necessarily on a basic network like a CBS or an ABC. And so they're they're failing because they aren't continuing to make content that people want to see the content that we want has progressed outside of what I think that they are either capable of doing or, or willing to do. And so that's where the, the crux is. If BBC can keep yeah. making good quality shows that, like they always have, uh, then it's not going to hurt. But if they, suddenly if they exhaust themselves by trying to appeal to the lowest base denominator of reality shows and and contest shows and stuff instead then yeah the contest shows that are the hits if they walk away then you're just yeah. going to come up with things to copy them that's not going to mm -hmm. do and and this is where i think honestly why i like bake off as a concept is because it's not like the other reality competition shows where they get, you know, there's a, an actual prize like, Oh, they win a million dollars or anything like that. 
you know, there's, it's really like they won. Congratulations. You won. And then it seems like nothing really happens. And, you know, we have, you know, we have British listeners out there. I'm pretty sure Daryl listens. So, Hey, let us know how wrong we are on that. Um, you know, feedback, uh, is well appreciated. Now, am I wrong in, in thinking that they tried to bring the show to America just recently? They did. They did um, a, a while on ABC, back ago. right? Yeah, on ABC, um, Paul Hollywood was actually a judge on there. Um, it was the American Baking Challenge or whatever with uh, Jeff Foxworthy. And that ended quickly because Paul Hollywood got a little too uh, comfortable with a judge, with a fellow oh. judge. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. 